Hi, everybody, and welcome to What's in My Drug Box, episode number six. Today, we're going to talk about amiodarone. Amiodarone is a Von Williams class three antiarrhythmic. Class three antiarrhythmics are potassium channel blockers that prolong phase three of the cardiac action potential. Amiodarone also influences phases one, two, and four. If you don't understand cardiac action potential, I would suggest that you take a look at that video prior to this one. Amiodarone is indicated in adult patients in cardiac arrest, stable refractory narrow complex tachycardia, and stable wide complex tachycardia. In pediatric patients, it's indicated in cardiac arrest and in stable wide complex tachycardia. Amiodarone is contraindicated in patients that are in cardiogenic shock, patients that are bradycardic, and in patients that have a second or third degree heart block. While iodine sensitivity is not a contraindication, amiodarone does contain a percentage of iodine, and while this has never been shown to cause an allergic reaction, the possibility does exist. Amiodarone is a class D teratogen, meaning that it has been shown to cause fetal harm because in animal studies, fetal toxicity was found. Mothers who are breastfeeding should not take amiodarone because it's excreted through breast milk. While amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic, it does have class 1 and class 2 properties. Like class 1 antiarrhythmics, amiodarone blocks sodium fast channels. And like class 2 antiarrhythmics, Amiodarone has a non-competitive antisympathetic action. Amiodarone prolongs phase 3 by blocking the potassium slow channels, which delays repolarization and causes smooth muscle relaxation. The intended effect of amiodarone is to break the presenting arrhythmia. Adverse effects include hepatotoxicity, conduction abnormalities, a prolonged QT, and dizziness. Amiodarone is also a proarrhythmic medication, meaning that it can actually cause the arrhythmias that it's intended to break. As stated before, medication doses can vary greatly by region so please refer to your own local protocols prior to administration. The adult dose for patients in pulseless VTAC or VFib is 300 mg diluted in 20 mLs of normal saline administered IV SLAM. An additional dose of 150 mg may be administered once, 5 minutes after the initial dose. Stable refractory narrow complex tachycardia is generally not treated with amiodarone in the field. PDR.net recommends giving patients 150 mg over 10 minutes. This is followed by 1 mg per minute continuous infusion for 6 hours, then 0.5 mg per minute for 18 hours. After 24 hours, the patient should be changed to oral amiodarone or decreased to 0.25 milligrams per minute. For stable wide complex tachycardia, give 150 milligrams diluted in a minimum of 100 mLs of normal saline over a period of 10 minutes. For pediatric patients in pulseless VTAC or VFib, administer a 5 milligram per kilogram bolus up to, but not to exceed, 300 milligrams. Dilute this in 20 mLs of normal saline and administer IV SLAM. This may be repeated once after five minutes, but the second dose is not to exceed 150 milligrams. Amiodarone is not indicated for pediatric patients in stable refractory narrow complex tachycardia. For pediatric patients in stable wide complex tachycardia, administer five milligrams per kilogram 
not to exceed 150 milligrams, dilute this in 100 mLs of normal saline, and administer over 20 minutes.